like to go ahead and start the Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019 Warrenton Board of Aldermen meeting. Uh, if you would, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Yoakum, if you're here, please come on down. If you want to come down with her, you can. Barb, it's okay. <laughs> so this is a, an appreciation for 24 years of dedication to the city of Warrenton. William Early, uh, who I believe is not here, it's 23 years. John Brockfeld. Yeah, I know, yeah. Still want to make the announcement. John Brockfeld, 22 years. Long time. Pretty young guy. like that who needs enemies right yeah. <laughs> Barry for 17 years.
Dennis Bohm, 21 years. Clara, is it Pedersen? Thank you. Pedersen for 20 years. Maxine Huff for 19. Dave Merks for 17. Robert Murphy for 15. Charles Noblet for 15. And Brian Vogt for 15. So we like to appreciate we appreciate all the dedication that every one of them have put into it, and uh, thank you for reminding me of that. So if you ever go out to the pool, you'll see your names on a plaque as well for what you guys have done for us, and that's our appreciation to to kind of memorialize it for as long as the pool is there, and even after that, when we move it somewhere else, so it'll be there forever. Yeah, I know I need to talk louder. I'm the same way. Um, we also like to thank uh, for Industrial Development Authority, the IDA would be uh, Rick or Ricky Gastorf Jr. for five years. So, and I know he was unable to attend, but we do appreciate it. So that's it. <laughs> Once again, thank you. That it would be the consent agenda. We have the regular meeting minutes and the executive session minutes from November 19th, 2019. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. So moved. moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schilharvey, seconded by Alderman Dyer. Roll call vote. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Schilharvey? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Auk? Yes. Alderman Miller is absent. Motion passes 5-0 with one absent. Next item will be hearing from the public. We ask that you come to the podium, state your name. We'll give you five minutes to speak on the topic of your choice. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Edward Meyer. I'm here tonight representing my mother, Janice Brockfeld, a 56-year city resident of Warrington, taxpaying citizen of Warrington. On uh, May the 16th, she uh, experienced an unfortunate incident with a fire, small fire, at one of her rental properties at 310 Walton Street. The fire was contained to the lower level with uh, extensive smoke damage to the upper level. The residence was uninhabitable. On approximately June the 18th, give or take, we didn't write the dates down because we didn't think it'd be a concern. She was contacted by, I believe his name is Mike Cross, came to her house and demanded to see the uh, settlement adjustment from the insurance company, which I think is ludicrous. Why does anybody from the city need to know how much the insurance company is paying a taxpayer in Warrington? After saying that, it was because of an old ordinance that nobody had, I have talked to in past elected officials, past residents of Warrington, people that have had fires in Warrington, have ever heard of, that she needed to prescribe or write a check to escrow to the city of Warrington. My mother, not being a person that likes to disturb anything, she went ahead and wrote a check for $41,750. I'm pretty sure, Mayor and Alderman, that nobody, probably 70% of the people in Warrington could not write a check like that if they sustained a fire. On uh, October 2nd or 3rd, not for sure, the final inspection was given at 310 Walton with the approval for the residents to move back in to inhibit the structure. Here we are. So on November 18th, my mother came down, inquired about could she get her money back? The house was livable. First, first comments was, well, we'll have to see. You'll need to come back. The next day, I think she comes back. I'm not exactly for sure on the date. She wasn't. She was told she needed to write a written re request to obtain her money back. My mother, not wanting to be a person to get things upset, 
She thought about it a while. She wrote the request, and on November 9th, uh, 19th, I think, yeah, 18th and 19th, she turned the request in. She was told that this request would have to go through the financial department and then to the board of aldermen for approval. I'm sure if you write a check to the city of Warrington to be put in escrow, that is not taxpayers' money, and it should not have to be given to the board of aldermen to approve to write the check to give it back. So here we are on December 3rd, two months after it was given permission to move back in, a man that came to her house requesting to see it can't come and give her a check back? Nothing. I think it's another sign of the right hand here at the city does not know what the left hand is doing. Thank you. <clears throat> Counselor, you want to talk? Yeah, so, Eddie, I appreciate your comments. The, the insurance proceeds that are required to be paid into the city is actually part of the revised statutes of Missouri, um, 67.4. 10, which is the section that sets forth the ability of the city to take down dangerous buildings. And we've actually done this on multiple occasions with the insurance proceeds. And what it does is it takes up to 25% of any insurance proceeds on the fire. It only applies if there are insurance proceeds. And essentially what it does is it protects the public in case the city has to go on that property and abate any dangerous building that's out there. Now, I will tell you that upon written request, that money should have been returned within 30 days. So that's a procedure issue that we're going to take a close look at and make sure because that's what the statute sets out is that it shall be returned within 30 days. So I don't know when the request was and I may contact you later. At, at, yeah, so, so it's required to be distributed within 30 days of the written request. But the reason we have this in place and we've experienced this as a couple of times is that is the situation where you have a responsible property owner who's cleaning up the property that you don't have to monitor. But the reason we have this in place and the reason the statutory authority is there is not everybody is like Mr. Meyer's mother, it's your mother, correct, where they are taking the proceeds and using it to repair the building. Um, in fact, we've had some houses that have gone through municipal court where they won't do anything on the property and we have to cite them repeated amount of times. Um, it, it's part of the dangerous building ordinance. It's something that every city does. Every Most counties do as well because they have the authority. When a house burns down, 25% of the proceeds goes is held by the city to guarantee that the house is abated and the dangerous building is abated. It has to be more than 50% damage. So if there's a fire that results in 10% damage, you know, whatever, you know, they determine it to be the percentage damage. I think, Eddie, you said it was completely destroyed, correct? Unlivable, unlivable unlivable yeah so basically it's to make sure that the city is not somebody gets paid out from insurance proceeds to make sure that the city is not stuck with the responsibility of of tearing it down and putting a lien on the property and coming out of hand for it so the the check that was written was was a percentage of the insurance proceeds correct Right, right. It's 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 a percentage set by statute of what it is, and we can take a closer look at that. It sounds like she got the money back. She'll get the money back within 30 days, correct, of the written request. Um, but you know, I know that there are sometimes situations where, and and honestly, the insurance company is supposed to pay that directly to the city. They're supposed to contact the city, and we notify the Department of Insurance that we have this ordinance in place, and the insurance company is actually supposed to pay the city directly. We've had this happen a couple of times where the insurance companies do not pay the city directly, and unfortunately, we have to go knock on the door and say, hey, our ordinance requires any insurance proceeds to be deposited with the city and held by the city until the building is you know, repaired, and then the city will release that 25% insurance proceeds. So I understand in this particular situation, it, you know, may have been unfortunate because you have a good property owner that's taking care of their property, but it also has protected the city numerous times when we don't necessarily have a good property owner that necess doesn't necessarily want to spend their money to fix the problem. They want to take their money and, and go. So it is part of the statutory requirement. It is part of our ordinance. I think every city I'm aware of has the same provision. It was. It's not supposed to work in a manner where 
our building inspect commissioners going out and knocking on their door, but unfortunately this has happened a couple of times. We had one incident where the Department of Insurance didn't send the payment to us for us to hold and distribute, and we had to go knock on the door, and they refused to pay it over, and it was a battle for a year and a half on a property um, that you guys were receiving complaints on it. So we try to use every tool in the toolbox to make sure that these dangerous properties don't result in somebody getting hurt on them um, and to make sure that they get repaired. And we'll take a look at our procedures make sure we have the shortest timeline possible um, to make sure that the money is returned. I know it's unfortunate in your mother's situation, Mr. Meyer, but this is what we have to do um, to make sure that these burned out houses are de demolished, the properties made safe. Because if you guys will recall, probably in the last five to seven years, we had a house where we actually went out and um, did the fencing around it because the nobody, house the house on Roy Avenue yeah and we had officers out there on a regular basis checking the property and whatnot because the property owner had basically said you know I don't care I'm not gonna you know so, I'll do it on my timeline but that but the insurance his insurance company should have absolutely we got notified with the city on that right within 15 days of the adoption of the ordinance we send a certified copy of the ordinance and we did this the last time we codified the ordinance and repassed this ordinance we send it to the department of insurance and the insurer is supposed to check before they distribute casualty proceeds and pay that a portion of that directly into the city if they have the ordinance but it it doesn't always get caught i would like to see us expedite this payment a uh, payment back to uh on the payables tonight because it is to be okay. paid yeah, it's it. we, we have a 30-day window i think the the uh you know after hearing mr meyer we'll take a look at the procedure and make sure that we're doing everything we can i, I know mr meyer said he talked to some people and never heard of this being done before we've done this for 10 years and that's part of the way we've tried to get these burned out houses repaired quicker or sooner um because you don't always have a responsible property owner or landlord uh, willing to spend the money. They want to use the money for something else and not repairing the property. Well, clearly, I think we we usually know who the responsible owners are. And I definitely would like to see us <clears throat> move a lot more quickly than May to December on someone like Janice Brockfeld that... And I, I understand that the the we, you know understand the request for payment. We have to pay that within 30 days of receiving the request, and we're meeting that timeline. And I think we can try to shrink that. I, and, I think and, that would be a really and good look idea. at it because I will tell you, I think most of the time on these burned out houses, the board is saying. You need to do everything you can to secure this, and even if it means the city's getting involved. So, like, we have to treat everybody equally, and you know, we can look at this time frame and procedure and make sure we're following it. We can contact the Department of Insurance. I think we've done that a couple of times to say, do we need to send you another copy of the ordinance? Nope, we have it. Um, but uh, we definitely can look at the procedures and policies and make sure that it's. I think probably what I take out of it balancing you know the complaint of mr meyer and the board's concern is making sure it's clear from the beginning you know that hey this is the procedure and having a written procedure of this is yes. what we have to do so it doesn't probably see some seem so random that a city employee comes up and says hey you have to do this maybe if it's a little bit more clear up front what the procedure is there's maybe a little bit better understanding doesn't mean everybody's going to be happy with it but uh, that may help clarify that so we will we will take those steps to look at our procedure look at our how we handle it look at this particular situation and and see if there's a better way to do it looks it looks like here there's actually two individuals receiving these payments tonight is that on two separate properties i get the other thing i note if you look at the payables we do pay interest on the on the money held are required by statute to pay so, the interest. So it's it's if we're holding it for six months, three, whatever it turns out to be, that that time frame we are paying interest for holding that money. And I think that's what I take out of this is yes. like, do we have a? 
kind of a little cheat sheet when we go out there that we can give the property owner and say, this is how this happens and this is how this proceeds and, you know, this is when you need to request your money back uh, because the city doesn't want to hold somebody's private money. Um, and I think that may probably have alleviated some of the angst about it, Eddie. Well, if, if, you, if they would have come out and said, hey, here's a sheet, this is how it happens, this is when you request, yeah. Well, I think and, that... And, and, to interject a minute I mean that that was part of the concern too that I've spoken with mr. Meyer as well um, and I get where he's coming from I mean having the explanation on a piece of paper is a lot easier than I think it is for somebody to try and verbalize why they're asking such personal information such as how much money did you get from the insurance I get that that's irritating because it's kind of like why do you need to know that but at the same time because it's a statute we have to hold to it is something we have to ask I agree with you. If we have yeah, a piece I, of paper to give someone, it's a lot easier. I think if you ask Mr. Cross, it's probably not his favorite part I'm sure of the it's job. Not. Go to, <laughs> it's not fun to do that. Go out there and, and request it. And so we'll, we'll, I think these are you know, legitimate concerns. And I think if we have more upfront information, it probably you know, alleviates situations like this so people know what to expect. I think that is what I take out from what Mr. Meyer says is, we didn't know what was going on, and well, we, pro we need to do a better job of explaining that. We do, but I mean, I also understand we don't deal with this a whole lot, and I know we've, we've talked about that, and that's why on my level I explained we don't deal with this on a day-to-day, -day, mostly because the insurance does send it, and we don't have to cross up that with the individual personally. Um, it was an unfortunate thing, and I do apologize, um, but, you know, we will get it rectified. I think the other thing we need to recognize, when we do have a property, and fortunately that's not in this case, but when we do have a property where the property owner or the landlord is dragging their feet, to me that's the single thing I get the most phone calls about is homeowners in the immediate area saying, I got this burnt down house, it's sitting here, it's destroying my property value, when are you going to do something about it? I get a, those calls come in a lot, I think, to board members. <laughs> because And so what do you do to kind of create a leverage? Unfortunately, you have to write laws for the people who don't follow them, not for the people who are good property owners. So that, that's my other comment. Even on that, I'll, I'll springboard off that. There are some people that like to find a, every little loophole there is in any type of ordinance we write which just puts a strain on the person that does want to do the right thing with their property um, because it, it, it makes us get a little more detailed and invasive when we have to approach it, you know, because we have to, <coughs> we've dealt with five before it. The unfortunate part is you just don't know who you're dealing with all the time. I mean, with Janice, we've known her. She's been a great citizen here for a long time. So any other comments? All right. Anybody else in the public that would like to come and speak about any topic? I did not catch it. All right. <coughs> we'll go ahead and bring the, the hearing from the public to close and for the Board of Aldermen comments. Ready for downtown Christmas. When is that? This weekend. <laughs> I, was, yes. I had it written down. I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> Stealing my thunder. I, I do have a comment, and I want to refer back to the recognitions tonight. Um, I know over the years, one of the people said to me, why don't you run for mayor? One of the reasons I've never considered is how hard it is to find people to volunteer. I think you recognize as the mayor, that's a real struggle. So when you do get people who are willing to put their time into the community, it's greatly appreciated and it's certainly recognized. We talk quite a while about how do we recognize the commitment of the park board members who had served such long periods of time and what's the appropriate way to do it. And kind of came to the conclusion of the plaque on the new pool is a way to recognize them as you walk in. It's not enough, but it's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a horrible attempt, but it's an attempt to thank you for all the work you've done over the time. Great. And you know, I'll, I've been honest to a fault many a times, and this will be another one. Um, you do try and be nice about asking for volunteers, and that's why we appreciate it so much. But sometimes you just want to look at people and say, you always complain. I'm giving the opportunity to change it, and they just don't want to do that either. So, I mean, from the bottom of our heart, we really do appreciate when you do volunteer and, and commit yourself to giving the city your time. I mean, it's not just something we're saying because we're politicians. We get it. You, you dedicate a lot of time and a lot of effort, 
and over the years you've dedicated a lot of years and we appreciate that very much if i could i'd like to springboard off that a little bit too i'm going to comment that uh, mr john barry said about when he's talking about the addition of the parks and i think one of the biggest ones was when we acquired binkley when binkley uh inspector lake and all that and one of the guys and i know john worked very close with him don probably did too but he's no longer with us but i uh one of the guys that really worked hard on that was pete noblet and uh he's deceased and everything but i just like uh, to let his family know how much we appreciated all the work that he did uh when he was on the park board and everything too so thank all you guys so not that we wouldn't have a uh why am i brain fart right now <laughs> wouldn't have what the thing you work on the most concert in the park oh i, I enjoy them and when i can make them i love them you know i think it's great i wish i could make every single one of them but it, it's enjoyable to get out there i mean the parks are great to enjoy but when we can hold special functions in them it just makes them that much better because you get to relax and it's a good environment. Um, I, I, for one, appreciate as many parks as we can in our in our city. I apologize about not being able to come up with that. <laughs> so next would be the mayor's comments. Um, I'll springboard off the. I'm looking forward to uh, downtown Christmas as well. Um, I think. Every year we've had a lot of fun, and it seems like every year the WDA gets more involved and wants more things, and I think that's awesome. I think it's great to see that. Um, I do want to remind people, uh, well, first of all, I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. I will say that. Um, I know we tend to forget it as soon as the holiday passes. So um, I hope everybody had a good time and enjoyed it um, and got their fill of turkey. Um, the, uh, with the downtown Christmas, I went down and was able to walk this past weekend and speak to some of the uh, business owners, and some of the new ones are really excited. This is their first year. They're, they're, they've interjected how much uh, they are looking forward to it and hoping that they can spruce it up or have fun and invite people in and share their part of it. And uh, it was neat to see the excitement they had. So um, I do know one of the businesses, I think it's Momos Cupboard, uh, gave a very big compliment to uh, Dolores, said that she's been in touch with her a lot and that she appreciated all the work she's done. So if you could pass that along, I'd appreciate it. Um, she said it, she's just been very helpful with a lot of things. So it was nice to hear from for one of our employees. Um, the other thing on here is uh, I would like to do a mayoral holiday for December 24th. I did it last year. I'd like to do it again this year um, to close City Hall. So I will be asking for a motion for approval uh, to give that mayoral holiday. Second. Whole day. Whole day. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Dyer. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Schultz Harvey. Yes. Alderman Dyer. Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Motion passes 5 0 with one absent. Next, I'd like to look at the appointment of Sam Richardson and Jessica Shanuel to the Tourism Commission for a three year term. I'll entertain a motion for that. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Shell Harvey, seconded by Alderman Deloy. Roll call vote. Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Hawk? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Yes. Motion passes 5 0 with one absent. Can I ask, are both sure. these individuals the result of us allowing people in the county to be on the tourism board? One is. One actually got back to me from a while back solicitation, okay. and I, I appreciated that. And so, um, Sam would be the one from our, our last appointment, and Jessica was is someone who lives inside city limits and okay. works. So, familiar with either one of them. 
Perry, uh, correct me, we have one going off at the end of this year. Is that correct? That's right, Melody. Is that not so, right? Is that right? So we'll, we'll be needing a... We'll need one more for the hotel motel industry. Hardest one to fill. I'm, I know you know that, but that is the hardest one to fill. Um, everybody asks about that, and it's there's such parameters on a lot of these. Um, and, and Mike's been very involved with that. Um, or, I'm sorry, Alderman Shore. He's been very involved with that. Um, the parameters around these are really hard to fill. So when you can fill them with somebody, it's it's great to be able to do that. Um, but I know he's had meetings canceled because we haven't been able to fill some of those. So I know he's been real active in that and much appreciated, but it's tough. So next we'll hear from City Administrator Terry Thorne. My first item for you this evening is to discuss um, the two ordinances that are on for tonight for approval. Uh, both these ordinances are related to clarifying what's currently in our code about the parking of large over 24,000 pound vehicles. Um, the code was not clear and our city attorney has clarified some areas of that code that were in question. Um, but both of these uh, solidify the inability to drive a vehicle on a street that is marked with a sign um, that says it doesn't allow a vehicle over 24,000 pounds um, and makes it clear that you can't drive the vehicle on the street to get to private parking on your residence if you're driving on that street that it, it is prohibited. So these two ordinances will clarify that and make it clear so there's a thorough understanding. So those are both on for approval for you later this evening. Um, the other thing is just to give you an update. We have um, been in the period to receive uh, public comment on the downtown property maintenance code in uh, updates that we've been discussing and considering. Uh, we do have several uh, comments that have come back. And so we will be incorporating into the draft ordinance uh, that we'll have prepared for you for a January meeting, probably the second meeting in January. Uh, we'll incorporate as many of those recommendations as we can and then provide you with a draft ordinance for that purpose. Uh, we will also put a public hearing on that night so that the public prior to the ordinance being on has a final opportunity if they want to come in person or they can continue to submit their comments and concerns to us and we'll try to incorporate those as much as possible into the draft ordinance. So just wanted to give you an update. There's been a flurry of activity recently. Um, so wanted you to have that information and know what the plan is in case you're contacted with someone who has comments that need to be incorporated. Thanks, Terry. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Can I, can I go back to your ordinances? Sure. <laughs> On 5419, um, no motorized vehicle over 24,000 pounds shall be parked on any parcel of land whose primary use is residential when the parcel of land is assessed by a street or alley posted with signs that prohibit the operation of the vehicle. Are we going to post a lot of additional signs? Is that what we're going to no. do? Our intent is not to add additional streets, but to enforce the streets that are already there and posted. Because this talks about where there has to be a sign there. So if there's no sign Correct. there, so we're, so we already have the signs in place for those streets. Is that what? Yes. Okay. And and just to clarify one thing about that Alderman Ock, because it's a good question, is we have this exception that you can drive your over twenty four thousand pound vehicle on a residential street if you're going to and home, from home. Um, but if we don't have it posted and they don't have notice, we thought that was important that it must be posted before we write them a ticket for parking, bringing it home. So it, it, they, they work in conjunction, so it clarifies the driving and the parking as separate things. That's all I have for you this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Director of Operations, Brandy Walters. Good evening. I have our monthly admin report for you. Um, as you can see, we're doing some quite a few interviews, trying to fill some positions. Um, we have had, we filled our grounds and maintenance position and our public works position, so they're filled currently. 
Um, I also wanted to let you know that on Friday is our uh, annual awards banquet, and that's at noon at the bank in the lower level that you all are invited to for lunch. We will have awards right at noon, and then we'll have lunch following that. Is that at First State? Yes. Okay. In the basement? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. And the other thing I wanted to let you know is that Mama's Cupboard, she will have a ribbon cutting December 13th, which is next Friday, at 1 o'clock. Where's that at? It's on Main Street, the old Where's Jordan's place. place. Oh, okay, I, you're right. That's right. Okay. What, what time did you say? 1 o'clock. You know what really jumped out on your report? And I assume your report's a calendar <laughs> report. We've hired 63 employees this year. That's yeah, but keep in mind, a lot of that has been recently for part-time. Oh, so the new plan, you're pointing <laughs> over there. Okay, I get it. <laughs> it just seems like a, a high turnover number, yeah. but there's a good reason for that. Yes, there's right. a lot. And that's all I have. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Dana Belaska, finance officer. Good evening. Uh, you have before you a list of claims for your approval tonight, totaling $574,179.95. Were there any questions related to that list of claims? I always find myself looking straight off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that it's you that I just do. <laughs> I'll shoot the I, you I know you do. I, yeah. I just apologize. I, I, yeah. the, only, the only one that jumped out to me was apparently we did some uh, software purchases. What about calling? questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve the accounts payable in the amount of $574,179.95. So move. Second. Motion made by Alderman Sharvey, seconded by Alderman Schultz. Roll call vote. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. <coughs> Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. Motion passes 5-0 with one absent. You have before you the monthly year-to-date financials for October. In those financials, you'll notice for the general fund that revenues prior to the transfer line, revenues are about 48000 above budget. That includes grant revenue that is higher by about 62000 which includes that uh, final payment for the Hickory Lick grant. Sales tax shows down about 1% uh, or $9,000 in the general fund. Um, other taxes such as motor fuel is up about $10,000. Pool uh, revenue is down about 31,000 compared to budget. And permits related to new housing about 13,000 above budget. Then in the general fund operating expenses, they are about 322,000 below budget of which about 106,000 are related to personnel cost uh, due to vacancies. Uh, pool operations, about 61,000 below budget. One of the key items there is the um, maintenance, the management fee agreement um, came in about 45,000 under budget as of September, um, just because we had a reconciliation at the end that um, we had already paid for some hours that weren't used, so that uh, decreased the cost in uh, the September bill. Uh, the balance is mostly related to training and supplies and maintenance. When you look at the water and sewer fund, you'll notice that uh, revenues are about 183000 over bu above budget, which includes residential and commercial water and sewer sales. Um, those are like 10000 under budget, where industrial sewer is about 88,000 above budget. Uh, the industrial sewer is related primarily to the Coca-Cola plant. 
There are some things at the beginning of the year with their operation change and also a little seasonal bump there. So it's not that we necessarily expect it to continue at that high rate for the rest of the year. Uh, connection fees are up by $50,000, again, related to the new housing starts. And you'll notice in the operating expenses for the water and sewer fund, they are about 137000 above budget, or below budget, pardon me. So the expenses are below budget, and again, um, a chunk of that related to personnel costs, about 41000 related to vacancies. The balance is just uh, timing issues with supplies and maintenance. Were there any questions on those October financials? Well, the transfer totals in the water and sewer are 41654 below budget. Is that staffing that's booked to another department and then we're transferring over to there? Is that what it is? And those vacancies are creating that? No, most of those transfers are just related to items that are paid out of the general fund. Right, out of the general um, fund. So again, it's, it's just a timing issue okay. on, you know, we currently don't necessarily book those every month, maybe once a quarter. So that should true up. That's true up is a good word in, in my profession. That's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, Dan. Next, we'll hear from the Lisa Kramer, the aquatics director. Good evening. You should have in front of you um, our November attendance report um, for our different um, activities and punch cards and daily passes. Um, to let you know, this month we started our monthly billing um, so that families can come instead of paying the full fee for a membership up front, they can do it by monthly um, installments. And we actually sold our first one today. That was very exciting. Um, and we are culminating our safety around water uh, safety around water program. Uh, that we were doing at the Warrington schools. They're coming on Monday, about 40 children, to practice what they learned in the classroom um, at the pool and learn doing uh, safety uh, assists and putting into practice uh, wearing life jackets and things like that. Oh, that's good. So are there any other questions? I mean, to me, the, the interesting thing when you look at your year-to-date attendance tolls, the use of the pool by non-residents exceeds the use by residents oh. significantly in almost every category. And that's interesting that, you know, we're able to provide a service outside city limits, but still be able to, you know, support the activities that are going on. I think that's really makes the city part of the community. You know, so I, that, to me, that's fascinating whenever I see those numbers. Any other questions? Thank you, Lisa. Next, we'll hear from Public Works Director Guy Jeevers. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Uh, you have my monthly report. Uh, we've uh, completed the sidewalk from Warrior Ridge to Warrior Avenue. We just got some dirt work to do, uh, but that's completed. Uh, we got all the generators serviced and ready to go for winter. A couple of trees we took down. It was close to the road that was blocking the road. It had two sewer calls and the controls for the upgrade at the wastewater treatment plant on the orbital is probably 99% completed. There's still a few things to touch up, but it's in operation now. So that's where we're at with that. Do you have any other questions? And on your report, the thing that I find interesting is the total water production history. <coughs> so you go from uh, like averaging 267,000 gallons for like 2015, 16, 17, and 18 really spiked significantly higher. And now it looks like we're back down to, if December comes in, about the historical average. So it really shows that something was going on in 2018 that caused more water production. And two, that was we had a lot of we had a lot of um, water loss, right. and so fixing and finding the things that we're losing kind of results in the numbers coming down. Right. And then if it's a long month and depending on the weather too, is a big part of it. But I mean, for projection purposes, it looks like we're pretty consistent, except for that one issue we had that one year. 
don't know if that how that plays in the long range planning for water needs, but it certainly is a tra interesting trend. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Thank you, guy. Can I go back to Terry for a second? Sure. All right. Now this is a question out of ignorance. Don't we typically have on the agenda for the first meeting in December the notification of filing again? Yes, we probably and I didn't do, see or at least the seller <coughs> talks about it. Uh, yeah, I just didn't see it. I thought, oh, maybe we're guaranteed an extra three years. Sure. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> no, I. Uh, Okay, so Maybe that's the official filing time is December 17th. Thank you. Notice will be in the newspaper this Thursday and next Thursday. All right, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> you got the look. What? You got the look. I know I got the look, but <laughs> I'm used to the look. <laughs> Bill's ordinance. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 54-19. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Delaway, second by Alderman Schultz. An ordinance amending Chapter 355, stopping, standing, or parking prohibited in specified places of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton by adding Section 355.045, parking of commercial motor vehicles prohibited in residential districts. Entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of Bill Number 54-19. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alden Knox, second by Alden Dyer. An ordinance amending Chapter 355, stopping, standing, or parking prohibited in <coughs> specified places of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton by adding Section 355.045, parking of commercial motor vehicles prohibited in residential districts. Roll call vote. Alderman Nock? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Motion, or bill passes 5 0 with one absent. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 55 19. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Nock, second by Alderman Dyer. Ordinance deleting table 9 C operating in residential zoning district of Schedule 9 commercial vehicles and inserting a new table 9 C operating residential zoning district. I entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of Bill number 55 19. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Deloy, seconded by Alderman Schultz. In ordinance deleting table 9 C operating in residential zoning districts of uh, Schedule 9 commercial vehicles and inserting a new table 9-C operating in residential zoning district. We'll call vote. Yes. Yes. Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Nock? Yes. Bill passes 5-0 with one absent. I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Made by Alderman Nock, second by Alderman Dyer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? We are so adjourned.